Hey guys, welcome back to Clownfish TV. This is Neon. I am here with Geeky Sparkles. Hello. And we're going to talk about Marvel possibly maybe getting a clue or at least getting better at giving lip service. Uh, Disney is pushing Marvel to honor what came before when telling new stories. Imagine, mm -hmm. imagine that. Imagine that. Uh, so, yeah, they're definitely going to have to pivot. And we've seen some, you know, some some indication that they're starting to get a clue. If it's not because they want to, it's because financially they have to. And they've also got like Perlmutter breathing down their necks at this well, point. Well, it's interesting. We're going to talk about what it said. But while there's some steps forward, I think there's also some steps backward or a step backward, at least. We'll talk about that when we get into it. Yeah. Yeah. So before we get into it any further, please subscribe for more pop culture news, views and rants. So this article is coming from piratesandprincesses.net. Check it out for objective Disney news uh, written by a certain Cambria Pratt. I don't know mm. who she is. That's like a bitch. All right. So what's going on is there was an interview with The Hollywood Reporter. OK, and that this Brad Winderbaum, who is the Marvel Studios head of streaming, is during the PR tour for the, the new X-Men 97 show, since we don't have Bo Mayo doing it anyway. During the discussion, they're talking about how um, they're excited about the X-Men 97. I guess Kevin Feige said there was two. I didn't put that in here, but they said there was two things that they, they needed to do was one, get a lot of the old voice actors back and then two, get the theme song back, which they got both. Yes. Um, but during the discussion, he was talking about the problems that we've had with streaming that as of like 2022, streaming is starting to have problems, which we said was going to happen. What? And then last year it got even worse. And he said, so now Marvel's going to be a little bit more judicious with <laughs> our choices. Then later they were, they were talking about how Secret Invasion failed. Yes. And then how they were retooling Daredevil Born Again, because they guess they, they screened it for the, the Marvel higher ups. And they were like, what the hell is this? And then they decided they're going to do it. Now, the bad news is they're using Loki as an example of where to take the show. Yeah, I think they're relying too heavily on Loki, Loki? and multiverse crap. I mean, that that is what is probably going to ruin uh, Deadpool and Wolverine. Is yeah, because they're, they're focusing too much on. Yeah, and they're already saying Deadpool's going to be, you know, multiverse. Yeah. Um. So I guess they were talking about this and a couple of things were confirmed. One is that they're trying to like honor what came before, but two, they actually canonized, admitted that the Netflix shows were canon. So he said, frankly, a lot of that, meaning Daredevil Born Again, mm -hmm. was influenced as much from Loki as it was from our X-Men 97 experience. It's about honoring what came before in order to find a new arc for these iconic characters. What a fresh concept. Now, if my Lucasfilm could do the same. So I'm really excited about what's on the horizon. There's some great... Great work coming down the pipe that audiences are going to really love. Um, no, we'll see. We'll we'll see. We'll see. There's I, a lot of things coming down the pipe that's not like they're going to end up scrapped. Yeah, I think that, uh, I, again, I think this is because of Ike Perlmutter breathing down their necks. And I think, well, they got rid of Victoria Alonso, too. And I think she was behind a lot of the idiocy, you know, going on with, with Marvel. Um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, I don't know how this is going to go. But they did. He did confirm that basically the Netflix shows are official MCU canon, which is good because they were the better shows. Yeah, I don't understand why they couldn't be because they actually did reference the Battle of New York in the first couple episodes. Mm -hmm. Of, of Daredevil, and all you have to do is be like, yeah, everybody got snapped, now they're back. But it's not like they were trying to bury them when Disney got, the, when they were going to do their own Marvel shows, they tried to bury these, took, they took it from Netflix, they were going to bury them. But now it sounds like they're actually going to just, oh, what, what was the last time Marvel shows did well? Oh, the Netflix ones. Yeah, isn't that sad, let's, though? Let's, that was... let's go back to that and then ruin that. I'm sure, don't, I mean, don't hold your breath. I'm sure they'll find a way to ruin it. But they're going to try to honor it before they destroy it this time. How sad is that? Then they're talking they're going to do a sequel to Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. now, too? Oh, yeah. That, so I guess that's back on the table. They might revive oh, Agents God. of S.H.I.E.L.D. next after the Daredevil. Okay, so basically what you're telling me is all the stuff that worked during the Ike Perlmutter era. <laughs> yes, basically. You're, you're going back to. Yes. That's, that's what you're, basically what they're saying. Correct. Because he was in charge. Like throughout all that, he was in charge of Marvel in the '90s too. He 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 was the owner of Toy Biz, and he got Marvel out of bankruptcy. And uh, Toy Biz sold a lot of X Men figures. Uh, you know, I'm just that's I'm just saying. kind of what it sounds like. Yeah. If I'm if I'm being honest here, that's um, that's very telling. 
That's very telling. Yeah, we hate Ike Perlmutter. He's completely out of touch. Let's go back and and uh, to his era and and uh, make sequels and reboots and yeah. Yeah, you guys don't know what the fuck you're doing. No, do you? and then and then interestingly enough, they're still saying we're still getting Ironheart because remember I said the other day about where the hell is Ironheart? Yeah. Oh well, apparently it's still coming. It's just they're they're just slowing the roll a bit and making sure that things that they, they, they take a little longer to reshoot. I mean to put them out. Yeah, trying to see if they can hurry up and make a deal with uh, Robert Downey Jr. to use his voice so he can be the, like the Jarvis. No, rele- I, mean, I don't know Relegated that. to back burner. Saying, they're, they're like, oh, yeah, Ironheart and Wonder Man. They're like, oh, we're doing it, I swear. Nobody cares. And then and then Blade, which keeps getting pushed back and keeps hitting bad news. Now yeah. the one actor they cast to play in the movie, he's no longer attached to it. Well, nobody, nobody wants this movie anyway because the plot was leaked. One of the versions of the plot, and they're like, it's basically Blade and like three other women or something. Like, That's what they were, they were saying. It's that was one Blade's, of the early versions, they said. Yeah, I'm like, nobody wants this. And also, you're never going to top Wesley Snipes' Blade movies. The first two movies were fantastic. You're never going to be No, those. they're not. Don't even and try. They're not even bringing it. Are you, they bringing him in it? You know what? Use the multiverse bullshit and bring Wesley Snipes' Blade into the MCU. He's still in pretty good shape. You could use some CG and de-age him a little bit or just say, hey, it's been you know 25 years. He's been fighting vampires for 25 years. Now he can be like the Whistler character which was chris you haven't seen blade you haven't seen blade movies. no i have not seen blade so it's his, not really my kind of thing but his mentor was a uh, chris christopherson and so he can be like the mentor character and you can get another you know badass well, this vampire hunter actor aaron pierre was yeah. attached they didn't say what the role was supposed to be but he's no longer part of that that's what he said when asked oh i'm no longer part of that yeah i don't i i this one i would not be surprised if they just ax it because it has had so many problems. problems. It's been nothing but problems. And you cannot top those Wesley Snipes Blade movies. I'm sorry. If you're bringing everybody back, even from the Fox X-Men, you you can bring Wesley Snipes Blade back very easily with well, the multiverse shit. Back to the whole thing about you know, the, doing this all as a press, press tour for X-Men 97. You were going to bring up one more thing about related to X-Men. Yeah. Um, the comics look like ass. Uh, so the, the good news... For those of you that hated the Krakoa era of X-Men, this is basically the X-Men went to a a magic island with a giant tree where they would die and come back to life. And they basically had their own mutant nation. Yeah. Anyway, is it like five or six years? This has been going on. Really? That long? Yeah. And it turned X-Men into like the most boring superhero comic out there. And every other month they were having a gala and it was just a bunch of bullshit. Well, it goes once a year, but still. Well, no, because time works differently in the comics. So they do it once a year in our time, which is like every month in comic book time. For real? Yeah, it's stupid. That's really stupid. Why would you go to Mutant Prom every month? Because... Once sounds enough. There's a certain demographic that they want for the X-Men books, right? So they anyway... They're not buying them either. No, nobody's buying these books. Like the X-Men, like we have a podcast episode dropping tomorrow. We have Art T. Bear on who worked on those X-Men comics in the 90s. And we talk about the cultural impact of the X-Men comics and cartoon and video games and all that stuff in the 90s. And how the X-Men, it was the biggest superhero franchise out there. It was the Avengers. It was bigger than the Avengers. It actually was bigger in a lot of ways than the Avengers. And they just destroyed this franchise. But anyway, they're finally getting them off of Krakoa. They're rebooting it. They're like, we're going to just hit the reset button. We're going to tease everybody with like 90s style X-Men. It's going to be fantastic. And then they announce the creative teams and they're like, oh, it's Gail Simone and some other people you don't (laughs) care about. And it's like, no, you get Chris Claremont. You get, you know, Wills Protasio. You get Rob Liefeld. You get, you know what I'm saying? You can't get Jim Lee because he works for DC now. But you can get some like top shelf talent, but nobody wants to touch these books now. And Gail Simone's not going to, She's not going to do shit. You know, no. it's, I don't think they're going to do mutant prom again, but I think it's going to be like the most boring fucking thing ever. Well, I'd say get art back on the book. I don't think they called him. I don't think because, you know, oh my God, he's talking to certain YouTubers now. They probably would, would not hire him to, to work on X-Men now. Lots of people out there that would love an opportunity to work on X-Men and they're not being given the chance, but this is a, a damaged franchise and this was all marvel comics i don't think disney had anything to do with it i think they just they just 
I took a very good thing, Money in the Bank, and flushed it. That, but, well, that sounds like on brand for Marvel and Disney. Oh, yeah, yeah. So anyway, uh, Tom Brevoort apparently was not real happy that uh, people aren't excited about this because this was supposed to be the big thing. They were gonna they were gonna cancel all the X Men books and start over with a whole new X Men line, and they have like I don't know like six or eight books or whatever the hell they're doing. I mean, I, I'd sell for one good X Men, one good uncanny X Men book, and I was just a wee bit like, yeah, you know what? If I'm hearing good things, I might go back because X Men was my favorite comic. I used to read X Men, all the X titles. I can Spider-Man. confirm you had boxes, long I had boxes, boxes full. Long boxes full of X-Men, like every freaking everything, X-Factor, X-Force. Um, I, I just, I love the X-Men and they destroyed it. They just completely destroyed it. And, you know, he's like, why, why aren't people getting excited? I'm like, oh, it's because their reading comprehension sucks. Yeah, they're reading comprehension. So they're just the bigots in the Messiah. It's like, no, they're not excited because the people you announced it's the same old shit. These people have ruined other franchises. They've ruined other books. They've caused lots of online drama. Nobody cares. And frankly, all the people that could turn X-Men around, they've moved on to other mm-hmm. stuff. They've moved on to, you know, their own creator own stuff. You know, I, I'm sitting here thinking, like, you don't have any triple A talent left at Marvel that could put the X-Men back on top. So I think people will check it out just to see if it's gotten any better, but it's a travesty what Marvel has done to the X-Men. Like, again, this was their Batman. This was X-Men used to massively outsell Batman. Now Batman's like propping up the comic book. Batman and freaking GI Joe and transformers on no planet. Should transformers be outselling X-Men? Well, apparently that's happening. Yeah, it's happening because the, the quality of mainstream comics are so bad that anything even competent, outsells you know x-men and it's it's pathetic but what they don't have prom at gi joe no, oh my god don't give my ideas the prom well idw put the trans and transformers i mean yeah. literally it was like it was all this gender ideology i'm like they are robots that turn into cars and blow shit up not blow blow shit up that's all <laughs> you had to you know you could stop yeah, I mean, it's, it's so easy to get the X-Men right, and that's why I'm like, I, I just don't understand. Galajon. Is that like, you know, Energon, Galajon. The Galajon. Galajon. Oh, that's God. That's like a potty. It Never does. mind, don't do that. Well, I was like, remember, it, uh, like, how freaking Enerprom, sad. Enerprom, Enerprom. Remember how freaking sad it was at San Diego? Was it San Diego last year? They had that that X-Men uh, gala event. Yes. The Hellfire Gala. It was, a, it was, uh, was it there or was it D23? Yeah. Or D23. Yeah, it was D23. I think it was D20. Yeah. It, it was, D- was. I don't remember. It was one, uh, one of them. D- one D23 one sponsor. It might have been San Diego, but it was D23 sponsoring. Whatever it. the deal was, you, you went to this bar, okay? And they're like, oh, uh, dress up like your favorite uh, X Men character and you get to play our arcade one up X Men. Yeah. Machines. And then there's pictures. Like, there's like, you know, oh, there's different like, stand up props that you can take pictures with. I mean, like, you couldn't, you couldn't ship in a real X-Men or game machine, but I'm also like, and the X-Men that you're, you're playing, those are the games from the nineties when the X-Men were good because you can't make an action game out of current year X-Men. Cause all they do is just stand around and bitch about politics and dress dance up off. and they have you a dance, dance off. off like in their, in their fancy outfits. I've, I've checked out some of the recent issues and they literally spend half the book just standing around bitching about their lives. Like, what the fuck is this? They should be fighting robots and shit. Like, I don't know if X-Men 97, we're recording this before it comes out. I don't know if it's going to be any good or not. I did see a clip of the battle with the Sentinels and they were playing the music. And I was like, that, that like two minutes was like the best X-Men content that Marvel has put out in 10 years. Well, it'll be interesting to see because apparently they're, they're, they're claiming they're trying to do more to use what is basically use what's been popular and honor the past <laughs> To, but to, then they to, do this. Yeah, well, on to the past and then make a news story for them. Yeah. That's probably going to have politics shoved into it. Probably. Maybe that's, maybe that's why uh, Bo DeMeo got gone. Maybe he was like, no, I don't want to do that. And they're like, I no, don't... we're going to have Gala. <laughs> that's I, it. I don't know. Uh, we're going to wrap this up. Yeah. All right, guys. Uh, please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants. And we'll talk later. Bye.